Growing up, one of my favorite baits was always the Blue Fox inline spinner. Honestly, it didn't matter what body of water I was fishing or, quite frankly, even what kind of fish were out there. There is something all-inclusive about a little silver inline spinner. That thing will catch perch, it'll catch pickerel, it'll catch bass. If it eats minnows, it's going to eat this bait. What got me thinking about this bait and this company in particular is I recently picked up a couple of vintage tackle catalogs from the Blue Fox Bait Company. That uh, bait company that was based in Cambridge, Minnesota, which is now of course owned by Rapala. Just flipping through these old catalogs, I saw some old friends in there, some baits that I used to love to fish, and some baits that I have been collecting that I have not yet fished, and I'm kind of looking forward to doing so on this channel. So welcome to Retro Bassin. Today we're going to do a little walkthrough of the 1978 and 1980 Blue Fox Tackle Catalog, as well as show you some of the new and packaged Blue Fox baits that I've been saving up for a sunny day. Retro Bassin, kicking some ass and wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray-Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40-year-old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Out on the bass boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin. One thing that I didn't know and that I realized when I was looking at this is that the Blue Fox Bait Company was actually called the National Expert Incorporated or NEBCO. I did not know that at all and if you guys look on eBay you can actually see there's a ton of lures, mostly spoons and spinners, you know, surprise, surprise, that are a NEBCO brand. At some point, I'm assuming probably around 1979, they changed the name to Blue Fox and sponsored a bunch of different pros and came out with some new baits uh, that looked sort of geared more toward the bass angler. So let's take a look at some of the different new in the package Blue Fox baits that I have. Actually, most of these are not going to be in the catalogs. I think these are a little bit more um, mid to late 80s, and these are going to be obviously earlier 80s or 70s, that is. But there's some cool baits here that hopefully will inspire some retro bass episodes in the near future. So one of the first kits I want to show you is this spinnerbait uh, pack uh, endorsed by Roland Martin. It's crazy, but I, I knew Roland Martin did a few things with Blue Fox. I had no idea how uh, deeply entwined he was with the company and their lures early on. But as you guys will see from these catalogs, his name is on a ton of stuff, Blue Fox. And one thing that I think is pretty cool is this. It's called the Roland Martin Spinnerbait Kit. Featuring uh, the number four Big Bass Tournament winner. Check that kit out. As you can see, I have not ripped this thing open yet. Um, but if I ever actually make it out of the state of Texas and down to Florida to see our uh, buds over at Small Water Charters, I feel like they run into rolling like every other week at the boat ramp. So I might have to bring this with um, just in case we run into the old Great American Fisherman. <laughs> so speaking of Roland Martin, there's a couple other pretty cool baits uh, that we've got. First one is this. It is called the Blue Fox uh, Flippin' Fool Jig. Check this thing out. So this looks like a, a standard uh, jig with a standard weed guard, but it's got that living rubber skirt. I've actually already ripped open a few of these, and I've got them on the retro wagon right now. Just kind of waiting for the right opportunity to do a little jig fishing, but there we go. Uh, and there he is, the great American fisherman himself with a couple of, whew, <laughs> hogs. And here's a nice one from Blue Fox. This is the Big Bass Spinnerbait with a Sampo. This is definitely a more modern, again by modern, it's probably like 1987 or 89, um, but version of a Blue Fox Spinnerbait. And it's got the Sampo, ball bearing, swivel, and that is actually a mean little spinnerbait. I have gotten the chance to throw this a few times. I like this a lot. I think this is the standard, uh, yeah, quarter ounce. And this one has a pretty cool color if you look at it. It's a chartreuse, 
but it's also got sort of a ghost minnow in there. That's a pretty neat color, and that one actually looks really nice in the water. And check out that blade, if you can see that, it's got a nice Roland Martin signature on it. One bait that unfortunately is not in this catalog, but boy, it's a really cool bait, and one that I have definitely fished with in the past, but not on the channel, is this. It is called the Blue Fox Wiggle Stick. This is a really cool bait, quite similar, in fact, to the Rattle Trap Pro Trap. It's got a hole in the actual body of this bait itself um, through which you pass the line and tie it to this treble hook. As you can imagine, this thing fishes a lot like a lipless crankbait, probably a little bit higher in the water column because it's just straight plastic. And of course it, well, that's just the hook, but it doesn't rattle. I do like this bait a lot. I have fishes for a number of different things from bass to pickerel. Um, it is a pretty cool little bait and I'll show you the back of it as well. But this one might definitely be worth a retro bass and deep dive. Maybe I'll do a whole day with just this thing, the old wiggle stick. Now here's a bait from Blue Fox that I might rely on my bass the most to kind of help me out and figure out what to do with. Um, this bait. This is called the Red Gill. And yeah, your eyes don't deceive you. That looks a whole lot like a swim bait. And it is. Um, what's weird about it though is it is almost a hollow body design and it's got this single hook on it with no weight. The material itself, it is, um, it's not actually just a standard like rubber worm soft plastic. It's almost got more of a vinyl feel to it. It's definitely reusable. It's not gonna break down too, too much. So what do we do with the old red gill? And this is featured in the catalog, so we'll take a look at it there. Um, but here's the back of it. And I think that you can put this thing on a couple of different types of umbrella rigs, it looks like. So what does this thing say? It says the uh, soft bodied red gill is indistinguishable from a living sand eel. Okay. Um, definitely more of a saltwater flavor then. Uh, it's a favorite forage of leading saltwater predators. Adapts easily to all saltwater rigging and available in models the 8 inch Thresher, 6 inch Raver, and 4 inch Rascal. Um, that is pretty cool. I wonder if you could fish that for a bass. I guess your best bet would probably be either to put it on a weight like that, um, almost fish it like you would maybe a drop shot or something, or you could put it in front of a, um, maybe some sort of, looks like a, a minnow plug or a diving plug or something. Um, the old drop shot technique, that is interesting. I wonder if you could do that on Lake Travis. That is a nice, big, deep, clear lake, and I know there's some stripers in there as well. So maybe that's gonna be the future of this bait, the old red gill. So, okay, let's check out um, the catalogs now, and I will show you, there's some really, really cool spreads in here. Some things that have gotten me searching pretty hardcore online to try to find some of these baits, including a old school plastic worm that I have never seen before today. All right, well, let's check out these two awesome catalogs. First, we've got the 1979 edition of the Blue Fox Fish Smart Catalog. And then we've got this one, which is the 1980 version of the catalog. So I've done a preliminary flip through of both of these, and I think we're gonna start with the 1979 version. And I just wanna show you a couple of really cool things here. So first off, uh, we've got the Blue Fox Tackle Company, which I don't think that it's probably still based here anymore with the Rapala acquisition, but said it was at 645 North Emerson in Cambridge, Minnesota. And this is really cool. It says, formerly the National Expert Bait Company, Nebco. Never knew that till today. That's pretty cool. And as you can see here on the cover, it looks like they've got their most recent uh, spokesman, uh, a young Roland Martin, who, by the way, looks a little Scott Martin-esque there, doesn't he? <laughs> so we'll start with a couple things here. Um, I will probably focus on the lures in the 1980 catalog. The lures are pretty much the same in both, and I tend to like the spreads in that newer one a little bit better. But this thing has uh, one pretty cool aspect of the company, and it is this. 
So it talks about the blue fox story. And you can see there's an illustration of a little blue fox with a, a trout in its mouth. It says Blue Fox Tackle Company is the new name for the National Expert Incorporated, NEBCO, a leading manufacturer and marketer of nationally distributed fishing lures for almost 40 years. Uh, the name change was a major step in a comprehensive program aimed to bringing new standards of product excellence and service to the company. Not only has the name been changed, but the plant location has been moved from Minneapolis to a modern-day new building in Cambridge, Minnesota, 50 miles north of the Twin Cities. It says the Blue Fox has also implemented a uniform packaging concept which uh, reflects the new identity. A confident but benevolent Blue Fox was chosen as the company's symbol because the entire army of modern anglers has discovered to fish better means to fish smarter. Smart like a fox. Ha, huh, I get it. Uh, these anglers are adapting newer, more innovative, and versatile angling tools to the challenging pressures of sport fishing. Blue Fox provides these tools. Blue Fox lures work because they do indeed help anglers to fish smarter. And to underscore the tradition of excellence with innovation, Blue Fox has retained the services of Bill Huntley as resident lure designer at 86 back in 1979. Um, Bill is the Dean of American Fish and Tackle Industry. Uh, also world-class angler, Bill has designed trophy-taking lures for more than four decades. You continue to serve as the blue fox continues to serve all fishermen. New and old, who want to fish better, one must fish smarter. Just like a blue fox. Oh, that's pretty cool. Okay, so as far as the lures, we're going to go over and look at the 1980 catalog because again, it's got all the same lures, a few new ones, and it's got this, which is really awesome. It says, World Famous Fish Smart Designers. And on the cover, we've got uh, really only one that I actually personally recognize. But first off, we've got uh, Francis. It looks like uh, Luciarni. Uh, then we've got Bill Huntley. I think that's the Bill from the previous catalog. There we have Mr. Roland Martin, of course. Pat Floyd, looks like he's holding some sort of buzzer there. Alex J. Ingram, who is sporting, that looks like a red gill. And of course, there is the blue fox emblem. What I think is so cool about what they did here is this tackle company, I mean, clearly they're really invested in their um, designers and their spokesmen. That's pretty bold to put just a picture of five of them right on the cover there. Uh, that's awesome. That was definitely a 1980s thing to do, sort of like the old Team Daiwa, where really it was all about the designers. So this is pretty cool. It says, meet the designers of world-famous lures and learn their fishing secrets. And of course, there's Roland. It says, I wouldn't go into a tournament without the Blue Fox. What is so cool about this catalog, and we're not going to have time to get into it today, but they literally do a profile of every pro that designs their lures. But that's really cool. And I think we do future episodes in Retro Bassin on each of these different lures. I'll definitely deep dive into the designers of those specific lures. And I think we're going to have a ton of content. Um, too many lures, too little time, of course. So here's the first spread. And I love this. So on the left, we've got this, which is... You know, the first ever Blue Fox lure that I had, and probably my favorite today, which is the Vibrax. And by the way, I will say, this lure was not in that 1979 catalog. So I think this was actually a new lure in 1980. And uh, it was designed by this gentleman. It says, uh, uh, Lucarni's Vibrax. That's pretty cool. Um, exclusive anti-twist design with a counter-rotating gear. Uh, inside bell resonator, and that thing definitely rings for sure. No swivel is necessary. Um, scientifically tuned uh, bell-like resonator sounds out a dual low frequency sound that alerts fish to an intruder in their habitat. Awesome. That is definitely a pretty cool uh, variation on the classic MEPS French spinner. And I got a feeling he's probably a Frenchman, huh? This is pretty cool over here. We've got another classic from Blue Fox. This says Huntley's Pixie. 
And this spoon is absolutely still available today. You know, I don't have any of these, but I probably have to pick up a few just to, to give it a whirl. And you can still get this at pretty much any of the, the major big box stores. So this says, the hottest floor going for large trout and salmon. Insert textured to resemble egg sac. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Um, the preferred food of hungry salmonoids. Choice of three hammered metal finishes, dazzling nickel, brass, or copper to match any water or climactic conditions. Oh, that's really cool. Okay, so this spoon itself, it's got this replaceable insert. So you can actually change, it looks like, the color of the spoon depending upon the conditions. That's awesome. The only thing I can't see is how thick that spoon is. Um, but it looks like it's more of a casting spoon than a trolling spoon, which I always prefer. Okay, so here are two more Blue Fox spoons, and honestly, I've never seen either of these. So this is uh, the Torpedo, which looks sort of like a heavy Daredevil. And then we've got this one, which is called the Flash. And this one looks like more of the standard Daredevil. Um, that looks like almost the imp size, which is my favorite spoon of all time right there. So we've got the Torpedo and then the Flash spoon. You know, I don't throw enough spoons. I used to throw almost nothing but spoons. I think i got to get back to doing that more, a little bit more. Oh, the big flash. Okay, that looks like a monster spoon shown actual size. Yeah, that's look at my hand next to that spoon. That's actual size. That is a, uh, a monster. <laughs> yeah, two ounces. Okay, that would not catch a bluegill. This is interesting. It's called the... Oh, okie dokie. I've never seen this. That looks almost like a um, like a crankbait or like a flatfish, right? With a weird sort of uh, fin on it. One of the all-time deadly dozen great lures floats at rest, dives when retrieved. Wobbling action is attractive to all game fish. Okay, so it's basically a series of different crankbaits. That's pretty wild. Let me know if you guys have ever seen that, but I've never seen... Um, the old okie dokie, but I probably should have, huh? Yet another spoon. I don't know what makes this one different from the other one. This is called the Aqua Spoon. Uh, manufactured from standard thickness steel and plated. Uh, five sizes. Uh, available at a modest price. Okay, this must be their discount spoon. Um, okay, that's pretty cool though, because spoons are expensive. So that's pretty cool they had a discount line of spoons. Not really stamped or even branded almost, you know? Okay, look at this. Tell me, guys, this does not look like Uncle Buck's buzzer. That is really nice. It is an inline buzz bait. It's got a couple of really old-school-looking things here. It's got the old-school blade. It's got the weed guard. And then it's got that buck tail uh, trailer. That's pretty wild. So this is Floyd's buzzer, and I guess he designed it. Uh, it says, uh, excellent weedless uh, characteristics of a rapid retrieve lure uh, that runs uh, overhead instead of through vegetation. Uh, each bait provided with extra stinger hook for optional use when fish are striking short or extra hooking power is required. Many top pros long hoarded this bait as a secret weapon. Roland Martin endorses Floyd's buzzer as one of the world's finest hot weather topwater lures. Precision, a heavy-duty propeller type spinner uh, creates a living vortex of action. Inline construction adds in the hooking of fish attacking at any plane or angle. Okay, who remembers the old Vibrotail? So I don't see a pro's name on any of this two-page spread here, but when you think of the swim bait craze that, that happens today, and it's happened for uh, honestly quite a while, you didn't see a ton of swim baits back in the day. It was really all about curly tails and maybe a paddle tail or two like a sassy shad. But this looks like this is sort of their version of a sassy shad with a really unique head design. Let's see if they say anything about it. It says the soft plastic body feels naturally edible to the wariest fish. They mouth a little longer resulting in more hookups. Uh, the vibra tail jig head is of an improved new stand-up design. Okay, that's pretty cool. Almost shaky head style. That permits the easiest pickup by feeding fish, either on the fall or at rest. Truly irresistible for vertical fishing. A number of school bass or walleye can be removed without disturbing the rest of the group. 
Sports a field calls it the hottest lure in years. Patented tail starts life like swimming motion on the slightest action. Unexcelled for both jig fishing and horizontal retrieve. I would love to find some fiber tails either in just a standard swim bait action or check this out, almost the spinner bait or beetle spin style vibra tail. Now what really, really caught my eye in this catalog and the first time I went through it was this bait. This is something that I have didn't even know existed to be honest with you. I've never seen anywhere. This probably has to be a flash in the pan product for them, but this is the Blue Fox Vibro Tail Worms, seven and a half inch, six inch, and a little baby four inch. Sort of a standard, almost flip tail worm body. But look at that. It's got the paddle tail there, just like a little swim bait. And by the way, it comes in some old timey colors that you know I would totally throw. A nice little, almost like a blue smoke, chartreuse, a green. Ooh, but the Vibratail Worm. So I've never seen that, guys. I don't know if you've ever seen them, but this probably is, you know, one of the more rare worms that I've come across in recent times. And I would love to find a Vibratail. I could totally catch a Texas bass on that bad Oscar. Okay, we're getting toward the end of the catalog here. On the left, we've got a spread by the man himself, Mr. Roland Martin. It says, a lifetime of torment experience and two years of uh, design and research went into this lure. When it was done, Roland Martin had come up with the finest spinnerbait ever manufactured. Ah, uh, don't you doubt it. So that is pretty cool. So it looks like a kind of a light wire uh, spinnerbait. It's got a cone head. Looks like it's got a living rubber skirt, one of those nice old skirts that you see. I see a little ball bearing swivel and a snap. Um... That's interesting. So yeah, I, I know that I've gotten some newer Roland Martin Blue Fox spinner baits that honestly look nothing like that at all. I've never actually seen the, I guess, 1980 version of this bait, but that's pretty cool. Standard single spinner. I will say that's a, for such a thin wire and a small blade, that looks like a pretty big arm, doesn't it? <laughs> Very interesting. And I would imagine that one might get a short strike or two if you didn't put a trailer hook on it. And then over here is one of the real head scratcher baits for me from Blue Fox. This is one that always intrigued me. It's Ingram's Red Gill. It is a swim bait looking thing, which immediately intrigues me. But it's weird because it's super light and it's got a giant hook, which means that this would be really tough to cast on a bait caster without any additional weight. But that light hook would be almost impossible to set on lighter tackle. So that's where I think you probably have to rig this up on some sort of rig, a bottom rig, or a drop shot in order to fish with it. Um, it says, long the top seller lure in Europe, the redgill is now making a major splash along both the ocean and freshwater fishermen in the U.S. and Canada, particularly along the Great Lakes. Oh, that's pretty cool. So I'm going to do a little bit of research on this bait. I've got a few of these that I'm willing to uh, open up for you guys and see if I can catch a bass or two. I just need to figure out how to rig it. But with that action, I'm curious. That thing might look pretty sick underwater. And here toward the end of the book, we've got some more red gills. This one looks more of a standard uh, modern day swim bait. It looks like it's got a little bit more meat there on the bone. And you could probably cast that thing. So I've never actually seen this version of the red gill. But that almost looks like a variation of like a Huddleston or something, doesn't it? Um, but with one big downward facing hook, which... Uh, that'd be kind of weird, right? You can imagine the place where you would cast that. Um, swim baits either come with a couple trebles on the bottom or maybe a hook up top, but one um, basically exposed hook facing downward, boy, that looks like that would probably get lost uh, on a tree limb or two, wouldn't it? And <laughs> speaking of apparel these days, um, Blue Fox apparel. I don't have one of those hats, but boy, I would love one. Blue Fox caps, patches, and decals. <laughs> if only text provisions could stock those. So thanks again, guys, for, for hanging out and watching me go through some of the cool things of the Blue Fox Tackle Company. As you can see, I am wearing some of the new Retro Bass and sponsored gear from Texas Provisions, um, including this shirt, which I think we dropped last week. 
and this brand new Bass and Bud hat featuring Bud the Bass. So guys, go ahead and drop a comment down below. Let me know what blue fox lure you want me to fish with next on Retro Bassin. Until next time, guys, keep the carpet side up and definitely fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin.